today, Apple unveiled three new Macs, all with brand new Apple Silicon chips under the hood. What does this mean for Creative Pros, and should you upgrade your Mac now or wait? Hello, my name is Brad, I review tech for Creative Professionals, and today Apple has announced three new products, a new MacBook Air, a new MacBook Pro, and a new Mac Mini. Do they look new? Nope, these are the same shells from what I can tell just running with Apple's new processors, or as Apple is calling it, Apple Silicon. The new MacBook Air starts at $1,000. There is no fan in this thing, it is silent. That is the main selling point here. Also, battery life, you get 15 hours of it, with web browsing. It's also boasting five times faster graphics and three and a half times more CPU power. They're also talking about getting twice as much speed out of the SSD drive and you can get that drive up to two terabytes. Also, this is still including that 13.3 inch retina display that we've come to expect on many of the Air products and an improved FaceTime camera and up to 18 hours of battery life if you're doing things like video watching. Then we have the new MacBook Pro. It is starting at $1,300. We're talking about an eight core CPU, two and a half times faster than what we're getting on the current MacBooks. We're also talking about a five times faster GPU. As far as battery life goes, they're talking about 17 hours of web browsing and 20 hours of video playback. They're calling this the best battery life on a Mac ever. They also talked a little bit about plugging this thing into a Pro XDR display. There is support for that. That thing goes up to 6K resolution. That's pretty impressive. If you've ever plugged a MacBook into, say, a 4K monitor or a 4K Wacom tablet, you'll know that you get it chugging a little bit when you have two displays plugged in running at that kind of resolution. Plus, you're getting all of the bells and whistles that you're getting on the current MacBook Pro just with the new processor and more speed under the hood. They also added a Mac Mini. This is starting at $700. They're talking about this one being three times faster than the old one in terms of CPU. Also has that eight core GPU, which is six times faster than the current Mac Mini. This one can also plug into that Pro XDR display, which gives you that 6K resolution. They also compared it to a comparable PC that was giving similar specs and showing that it was about one tenth of the size, which is pretty impressive. Whoa, these numbers are insane. How did they do this? Why wouldn't you want one of these new Macs? Well, overall, this is a very good thing. But I think it also might not be a bad idea to wait at least a little while if you're designing, illustrating, doing video production, or that sort of thing. You might be okay. I think a lot of people who are upgrading are going to be okay. But there are some things that you might depend on that, that won't work or might break if, if you upgrade right now. Apple has done a lot to smooth this transition but it'd probably be a good idea for me to jump in here and explain first, what is this? What is Apple Silicon? For years, Macs have used Intel's processors, and these are the same processors that you find in most Windows computers as well. Now, Intel's been having a few rough years, missing some deadlines, not providing the kind of incremental improvements everybody wants out of them year to year. At the same time, Apple's been making their own chips for a while now. Those are the chips that we've been seeing in the iPhones and in the iPads. As those have gotten better and faster, it's only natural that they would want to use them in their laptops as well. These chips are designed to use less power. This means better battery life when we're talking about phones, but you know, more battery life would be kind of nice in a laptop too. Now, usually in the computer world, what makes a microchip faster is how much power you put into it. So increasing the amount of electricity that you're pumping into the chip usually makes that chip run faster. That is my dramatically oversimplified version of how CPUs work. If you look at the new PlayStation 5 or the new Xbox Series X, they're pretty big consoles. The reason they're so big is because they're pumping a lot of power into those processors. More power also means you're going to be creating more heat. If you want to get optimal performance out of those processors, you need to get rid of that heat. That needs big fans. That needs big heat sinks. More air coming in, more air getting pushed out, out, that's going to get you that better performance. The new M1 chip Apple announced today could do more with less power. So you see them throwing around some pretty crazy numbers on their new computers, up to three times as much CPU power, up to six times more GPU power. So to summarize this entire thing, the pros here are that you're getting more computer performance for less electricity. 
So what about those cons? Well, this is a completely different architecture than what Intel is. Software needs to be rewritten or recompiled in order for them to run on Macs natively. Now, Apple's trying to make this transition as smooth as possible by doing some emulation on their end. So if you are using a native Mac app that runs on Intel chips and it hasn't been updated yet, it will be emulated and you should be able to run it on these new Macs. I'm personally looking forward to getting my hands on some of these new computers so I can test these things out. Apple's been boasting some really good numbers when it comes to how well this emulated software runs. I'm, I'm a little skeptical. I know, I know, people don't like it when I doubt on the Apple, but whenever I've used emulated software, whether we're talking about Android apps running on a Chromebook, or we're talking about what Windows do, has been doing during their ARM transition, where they have been emulating their x86 software on their ARM stuff, we always see really laggy, poor performing software. It's possible that we might still see good performance if Apple really can get two or three times the CPU power out of there, then maybe that emulation layer won't matter because it's just running fast enough and all that fun stuff. But still, I wanna see it myself. I also wanna know about little things like drivers. For example, will Wacom's drivers work when emulated? I have no idea. Huion, XP Pen, they're all running off of drivers. Will our hardware still work with this new hardware? I also wanna know what software is going to be ready and running natively. They did mention specifically that Adobe Lightroom will be ready next month and Adobe Photoshop is in the works and it will be ready early next year. I would suspect that Creative Cloud apps can run in emulation and I'll definitely be looking into that since Photoshop is a bit of a resource hog. That's definitely probably the primary one I'm going to be looking at. I also rely pretty heavily on the Adobe software suite. All of my videos are edited in Premiere. I use Adobe Animate for a lot of elements of my videos. So I'm very curious to see all, how, how all this pans out. They also had a little video segment in there where they were talking to developers about their various apps. Affinity was one of those developers. That was kind of good to see. It sounds like they're rip roaring and ready to go. It didn't sound like it took them nearly as long. They don't have quite the, the history of software to kind of bring up to date that Adobe does. And a lot of their software was running and written natively for the Mac to begin with. Plus, they have fully functional iPad apps that they might be able to leverage for that sort of thing too. So if you're using Affinity, apps, it sounds like they're going to be ready to go day one. There's so much more here I didn't even touch on. Like these new Macs are using the same architecture as the iPhone and the iPad, so they can run native iOS apps. That's that's kind of cool. That could be a huge deal if they're optimized well for the Mac's interface. Apple has talked a lot about gaming performance. Now, again, you could bring over a lot of the mobile games from iOS. I think that's still going to lag behind when it comes to some of those AAA PC games or some of those console games that are out there. We haven't seen as many of those on the Mac in the past. Now that you have a brand new architecture, I don't think we're going to see them in the future either. I also wouldn't be surprised if Apple has something up their sleeve with AAA games that's similar to what Microsoft is doing with their Game Pass service, streaming games, or Google Stadia. Amazon's got a new one too that does something similar. But if they do that, that could be really exciting. So what do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.